In this video, we will look at how to solve a static magnetic problem with finite element method magnetics software. After we start the FEMM, the first step is to add a new, new simulation. This will be done from the menu or with this button. And the default is the magnetics problem. As, as you can see, it, is, it has a possibility to create electrostatic heat flow or current flow problem, but our magnetic valve problem is a magnetic problem. And after we get this drawing window with a lot of additional menus and buttons, the first step is specify the problem. This can be done with the problem menu. The problem type is oxysymmetric. The length unit is millimeter. The frequency is zero because this is the this is a static magnetic field problem. And all the other hmm, settings is appropriate for us. And after it, the next step is draw the geometry. This can be done if you select the point or in the operation menu, the node, and you, you can click and you click somewhere in this window. However, it's not too easy to draw the geometry by this way. So it's much easier to use the tab button, the tab key, and you add the coordinate of, of the nodes. And after we finished the drawing, we click on this button and maybe the minus, and we will see here is the geometry. Or maybe yes, we have some one additional node. If you so the selection means the right mouse button, so you can click the notes and press the Dell button. And this one is the core. This is the winding and, and here is the closing boundary. And after it, the next step is draw the lines. So we select the line button or in the operation, this segment. So this segment means the straight line. The arc segment means an arc as the name shows. And you click on the start node and the end node. And the last step in the pre-processing task is specify the different, different blocks. So as I mentioned, this will be the core, this will be the winding, and this is the surrounding air. However, currently we haven't got any boundary conditions or materials. So the next step is specify the materials and the boundaries. If you click on the materials window, you get this definition window. And in the add property means you add a new material, delete property, delete a material, 
the modify is to modify any properties of the material. So the first is the air. In this case, the, the relationship between the magnetic flux density and magnetic field intensity is linear. So one and one in the R and the Z direction also. The next one is the winding. In this case, also linear, the BH relationship. However, it's very important to calculate the source current density. This will be done after we specify the iron core. And the last one is the core. In this case, we should select this nonlinear BH curve and click on this edit BH curve. And, then, and here you can find this read BH point from text file. And after we select the downloaded file, the first column is the H and the second is the B. So select this one. The B unit is Tesla, the H unit is amp per meter. And click OK. And here you can see the imported data points. And to, and to check, check this, use this plot BH curve button. And after everything is appropriate, click OK. And almost we finished the material specification, except the calculation of the source current density. This can be done in the following way. So the number of turns is 2000. And the current is 0 0.2 amp. And the cross section of this winding is six millimeter multiplied 20 millimeter. And the current density is the number of turns multiplied with the current and divided with the cross section. Here you can see this will be the current density. And you copy and finally paste in the winding. But be careful because in this case, in our case, the unit of the source current density is amp per square meter. However, Necessary to specify this in mega amp per square meter. So let's do this divided by 1e6. So in this case, this is approximately 3.33 mega amp per meter per square meter. Okay. The next property is the boundary. In this case, we also used the Dirichlet boundary conditions. This means in this case, this prescribed directly the value of the magnetic vector potential and the value of the magnetic vector potential is zero. So more or less that's all the specification of the boundary. After we specify all the materials and the boundary conditions, specify first the different region of the problem. The selection means the right mouse button in this case. So you can click 
click on this none, press the space, you can select the core. And if you want to specify the mesh size, you can done with this in these options. So here you can add the size of the mesh. This part will be the winding. Finally, this will be the air. The specification of the boundary is more or less same. So we select the segment, select all the outer boundary of the problem. Finally, before we start the simulation, save, to save this design. After we save, our last two step is the mesh generation. This can be done with, with this yellow button or this mesh menu and create mesh. Here you can see the finite element mesh and in this window, the number of the nodes. This number of nodes means the number of unknowns. And in the analysis button, you press the analyze or you used this button. And after FMM solve the problem with this uh, eyeglasses button, you can visualize the results. In default, you can see the equipotential lines. So you can click on this colored button and show the magnetic flux density. And also it has a possibility to visualize the vectors. For example, the vectors of the magnetic flux density. However, the arrow is somewhere huge, somewhere is more or less nothing. In the view tab with the set grid, you can specify the density of the arrows. So as you can see here, in this case is much better and with the scaling factor, you can create a much better vector plot. And the next step is the force calculation. You can select this era button or in, from the operation menu, the era, click somewhere inside the core, select this integrate menu or the integrate button. And from this list, you can select this force via a weighted stress tensor. And here you can see the results. If you check the results from the other software, you can realize this is much higher than, than we than we expected. So this is more than 200 micronewton. However, the result is less than 100 micronewton. But this goes the mesh. So if we check the finite element mesh, we will see this is not so dense. So we also select this block and re-specify the mesh. So this will be 0 0.5, for example. The winding will be 0 0.25. And the core is also 0 0.25. And as you see in this case, is much denser. The finite element mesh, we resolve our problem Let's see again 
the results. So we select the core, the integration, and the force. In this case, our results is much better. In reality, this force is the error of our simulation because the core is in the middle in the solenoid winding. So in this case, the force, if this is perfectly in the middle, is zero. So this is the error of our calculations, but this result is much better. In this case, we also select all the other era the integration, select the magnetic field energy. Here you can see this magnetic field energy. Let's recalculate. This whole, so let's recalculate the inductance which is two times the magnetic energy divided the square of the current. And 51.8 microhenry is the result.